Praise be to God. This is the night the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. We have printed now the, uh, the 2013 Word and the Prayer of Exchange. I want to pass these out. Get them out, please. Thank you. Prayer of Exchange. There is no change without exchange. Amen? You can try and change, but if you don't exchange, there's no change. If you go to the store and you buy the wrong size, you look foolish if it's way too big. And if it's way too small, you look foolish. So you got to exchange it so it fits right. Hallelujah. The prayer of exchange. Glory to God. Would you turn to Matthew 24? In Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24 and verse 3. Would you read it with me, please? It says, Now as he, Jesus, sat on the Mount of Olives. How many of y'all know he's going to return to the Mount of Olives? The disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? This is the end of the age of grace. It's not the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. Is that happening now? Amen. You know how many preachers are out there preaching homosexuality is okay? Same-sex marriage is okay? Hello? Abortion is okay. This is what he's talking about. Has everybody got it? In verse 6, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. In other words, what he's speaking right here is what we called, is what we call awakening judgments. These are awakening judgments. And we are right now in a time of awakening judgments. Has everybody got it? We are in a time of what? Awakening judgments. Amen. And, and in this awakening judgments, if the purpose is, is that man becomes awakened. These judgments are to re rescue us from the wrath of God. And, and in this time of awakening judgments, the body of Christ needs to be really awakened. And one of the things that the enemy does is put people to sleep. In compromise, laziness, um, procrastination, all of these things are an area where a, a, a person goes to sleep. They're not consistent anymore. All of these areas, a person will go to sleep. They become more worldly and more carnal. They become more um, self, selfish, self-sufficient. All of these areas cause a person to become asleep and lose the reality of what time and what season we're in. 
And in this is vitally important that not only do we maintain awakeness, but that God is going to use the body of Christ and those who are awake to awake others. And, and in this, you know, it was just put on my heart when I saw this prayer, the prayer of exchange. One of the things that we need to do is keep exchanging. So we change. You know, we want to stay awake, don't we? And the enemy puts burdens on us. He puts things on us. He puts labels on us. And we agree with uh, goofy thoughts. We agree with certain things. We get People get offended very easily. They're, they're, they're led by too much emotion. Living out of the soul instead of the spirit. And I think it's important. I'd like us for all to say this prayer tonight together, even right now. So if you'll grab your prayer... And let's speak it in. And let me tell you, you can add all you want onto this prayer, okay? This is not the end. You can add anything you want on here. So let's speak it together. You ready? You all got it? Holy Father, as I come to you in the name of Jesus, and I ask for your forgiveness for all the things I've done to offend you or hurt others. I remind you of the price that Jesus paid for me and accept the exchange he made for me on the cross that started my new life in Christ. Surely Jesus has borne my grief, carried my sorrows, was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities, chastised for my peace, and by his stripes I am healed. In my acceptance of his exchange, I not only cast my cares upon you, but I ask to exchange my heart for your heart, my will for your will, my desires for your desires, my blindness for your sight, my hands for your hands, my walk for your walk, my words for your words, my thoughts for your thoughts, my deafness for your hearing, my deception for your discernment, my anger for your peace, my fears for your love, my emotions for your emotions, my attitude for your attitude, my past for your future, my presence for your presence, my sickness for your healing, my bondages for your freedom, my ways for your ways, my motives for your motives, my lusts for your love, my pride for your humility, my weaknesses for your strength, my rebellion for your obedience, my wisdom and understanding for your wisdom and understanding, my anxiousness for your rest, my suspicions for your trust, my compromise for your consistencies, my failures for your victories, my lack for your abundance, my debts for your prosperity, my religion for your relationship, my sorrows for your joy, my discouragements for your endurance, my doubt for your faithfulness, my troubles for your deliverance, my strongholds for your truth, my hardness for your compassion, my disorder for your order, my priorities for your priorities, my curse for your blessing, my abilities for your favor, my addiction for your liberty, my control for your surrender, my life for your glory, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And again, you can add to this all you want and speak it as many times as you need until you have breakthrough. Breakthrough. So we are at a time of awakening judgments. We're seeing judgments all over. In First Corinthians, on First uh, John chapter 2, There are national judgments and personal judgments. First John chapter 2, verse 15. <clears throat> verse 15. Hallelujah. Let's speak this together, please. It says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is what? 
it is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Wow. Now, this battle between the will of God and the will of the world, or the, called the will of man, is constant. It's constant. The world associates with lust and pride. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Pride is the will of man, influenced by the ruling forces of darkness that rule the earth. So you are constantly going to be pressed to do your will instead of God's will. Has everybody got it? That impression is always going to be there. Paul described it as hard-pressed on every side. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, the enemy is going to try to influence you for you to believe that you're doing your will instead of God's will. Has everybody got it? In fact, he'll try to convince you that you're doing God's will. Because the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the tree of the serpent. So people try to justify what they're doing by being good. But the tree of life produces righteousness. There's a difference. The will of God is always associated with righteousness. The will of man has a sense of good and evil. Because even the Bible says in the last days that men will call good evil and evil good. Amen. So we know, and this is an area where we must stay awake and discern. We must be able to discern what's clean, unclean, holy, unholy. What is God's will, what's not God's will. What's righteous and unrighteous. What is sin, which is the presence of evil. So we see here that man is influenced by pride. You cannot, there is a spirit of pride, but then there's the nature of pride. I'm going to say that again. There is the spirit of pride and there is the nature of pride. And the nature of pride is associated with the old man. He was brought forth by pride. The new man is brought forth by humility. So there's always going to be that battle, isn't there? Let me share something with you. The flesh can never change. It never will change. The Bible says that the Word became flesh, right? And what did Jesus do with it? He killed it. Amen? So, the only way to have victory is to kill your flesh. And I don't mean take your, slice your throat or anything like this. Jump off a roof or hang yourself. It means crucify your flesh. Now, where it says to be led by the Spirit is to crucify your flesh. So there's an area where we must battle, or else if your flesh is not crucified, it will fight. It's always fighting for control because the old man is fighting for control all the time. And this is what the enemy uses. He always wants to get dominion over the will of God, he wants to compromise the will of God. He wants you to do the will of God one day and the will of man the next day. He's, he, the Bible says it is the most cunning beast. He can flip you in a second. He can trick you so easily that you believe you're talking to God and that ain't God. That's why you got to have the Spirit. Because you can't discern the things of the Spirit without being filled with the Spirit. People are trying to do things in their own strength not being filled with the Spirit. And they get deceived all the time. Go to verse 18. It says what? Little children, it is the last hour, and if you, as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Antichrist. Anti, now, he's speaking of one person that's going to be known as the Antichrist, but there is an Antichrist spirit. Even now many antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. So the antichrist spirit, also known as the prince of power of air, is antichrist. 
it is going to come against Jesus the Christ. Has everybody got it? It, it, don't, it don't care about other religions. In fact, it will promote other religions. Has everybody got it? It will promote Buddha, it'll promote Islam, it will promote all of these other things. But it's not going to promote Jesus the Christ because that spirit is Antichrist and that spirit is what rules this earth. Because there's only one true God. Amen? So in this, he says that they have, they're everywhere. The Antichrist spirit which rules the earth. In verse 19, it says, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, known as the Holy Spirit, and you know all things. There isn't any other belief system that associates with the Holy Spirit. None. And He is the Spirit of truth. He is the Spirit of God. There is nothing else that associates with the Holy Spirit in this realm. Has everybody got it? And people become so religious and lose sight of relationship with the Spirit. So we see the Antichrist is the ruling kingdom of the earth. Again, it is against the Christ or the anointing, the true God called Jesus. And he's against his followers. So if he's against his followers, it's because he's against the will of God. He is against the will of God and his purpose is to promote the will of Satan using the blindness of man's will. He will use Satan's, he's trying to promote Satan's will by using the blindness of man's will. Why? Because he tries to get man to cooperate with his will. And this is where that discerning area of good and evil. How many times have you talked to someone who says, well, I'm a good person. So they actually believe that they're, they're fine, and, but they're really doing man's will, aren't they? So if they're doing man's will, whose will are they doing? Amen, Satan's will. Has everybody got this? Go to Galatians 5. Now, because he's the most cunning beast, he tries to trick individuals, manipulate individuals. And he does that by causing them to sow. Sow. Galatians chapter, chapter 6, I think it is. Yeah, Galatians 6, verse 7. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Do not be what? Do not be what? Do not be what? What's Satan's greatest weapon? Deception. And his power is fear. So do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he will also reap, which is a spiritual law. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap, reap corruption. So he's, he who sows to his flesh is doing the will of man. But in true reality, he's doing the will of Satan. So what the enemy tries to do is to convince you to do the will of man because if he can get you to do the will of man, he causes you to sow to the flesh. If he can get you to sow to the flesh, he's got access to you because he knows that you will reap corruption. Well, is God sending you corruption? No. So the enemy will, won't he? So he, this, understand this. This is his big ploy because deception is the weapon. So he deceives us in whatever he can do so that we sow according to the flesh or according to the will of man. And then he gets access to us. It's just like when we would be clean for a while or whatever and, and we would backslide. Or we would do something stupid. Man, I can't believe I did it again. Well, he, he pounds you, pounds you, pounds you, convinces you to do this, and then you do it, and then he beats you up for doing it. Amen? And we never complete anything. We stay in that vicious cycle. But that's how he operates. So, again, 
sow and reap, right? Verse uh, 8. For he who sows to his flesh will the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap what? Everlasting life. So let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we what? Do not lose heart. So we've got to be continuous. We've got to battle this constantly to maintain, to be disciplined, to be consistent in whatever it is that God has got us to do so that we do not sow to the flesh. So the only way to outrun sowing to the flesh is to sow more to the Spirit. Amen? To sow more to the Spirit. So one of the things the enemy likes to do is to prevent you from sowing to the Spirit. He tries to prevent you from missing worship. Why? Because when you worship, what do you do? So to the Spirit. He tries to, pre even at your home. He tries to prevent you from speaking the word. He tries to get you busy. Every morning you wake up, there's a list for you to do. Hello. Here it is. This is what we got to do. Come on. Then he tries to get you busy so that you don't sow in the spirit. And if you don't sow in the spirit, you're sowing in the flesh. And if you sow in the flesh, he has access to you. Remember, he is the most cunning beast God created. He's not stupid. But he's so smart, he's stupid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, so judgment is a reward. When judgment is, there's a reward. In other words, it's an area of judging. Amen? God judges us, doesn't he? In fact, it says that his, our works will be judged and we'll be rewarded. But then there's another judgment also which is associated with unrighteousness, sin, wickedness, that there'll be a judgment for. A judgment for doing the will of man instead of the will of God. Amen? Amen? So in this, we can either be rewarded or be punished. Rewarded or punished. Now, when we minister in the jail, when we go into jail, and I share with them one of the first things, they said, well, you can either stay in here and be punished or you can accept the rescue. See, because the will of man is to punish man. The will of God is to rescue. So people go to jail... Because of something that doesn't matter. But they're in jail because God is in hope that they'll be rescued. But many people reject the rescue and accept the punishment. You know how many times I speak to people and they'll say, Yeah, uh, I, I don't want probation. I'd rather do the time. Do you know why? So they're willing to accept the punishment instead of the rescue. Because... They know that they're not going to make it. Well, that's plumb dumb. So if they know they're not going to make it, they already have an intent to do something wrong. Their heart's not set towards the Lord. It's still set towards the will of man. Amen? In John 16. We are seeing awakening judgments in a mighty way right now. It is causing people to awaken. In John 16, in verse 7, John 16 and verse 7, let's speak it together. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will do what? Convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. And of judgment because the ruler of this world is what? Is judged. I want to share with you the area of how God sets things up. 
Because judgments are the area of awakening, aren't they? And it's to rescue us from the wrath or death. But in this, the first thing that God utilizes in the area of awakening me and you is called conviction. It's called what? Conviction. So he convicts us first, doesn't he? After conviction, the next level of awakening is called chastisement. So he chastens us. The next level of awakening is called judgment. And if none, if these three don't work, then there's wrath, then death, which is eternal separation. I'll say this again. Conviction, chastisement, judgment, wrath, and death. And Proverbs 19. Proverbs 19 and verse 29. Let's speak it together. Proverbs 19, 29. Judgments are prepared for what? Scoffers and beatings for the back of fools. Hello. And hope for what? Awakening. Awakening. Amen. But why reach, why go to all the way to judgment? Go to chest, at least accept the conviction, you know. <laughs> accept the conviction. But when we don't accept the conviction, then there's chastening, isn't there? And that's in Hebrews 12. You know, when you, when you begin to look back after you get cleaned up, cleared up, and filled up, then you begin to look back and look at how many times the Lord warned us. How many times he tried to rescue us, right? How many times we had the conviction and we ignored it? <laughs> and then we got chastened. <laughs> and then we got into a place where, oh my God, if I don't change my life, I'm going to die. Because we knew judgment. We sensed. I know that there was a point in my life that I knew if I died, I was going to hell. And I didn't want that. Hebrews chapter 12. Is everybody there? In uh, verse 5. 12.5. And let's speak this together. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor his dis nor be what? Discouraged when you are what? Rebuked. Hallelujah. So don't be discouraged when you're rebuked. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and what? Live. For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. So have you ever been in a painful situation? Yeah, man. Especially when um, you thought you were doing the right thing and found out it was the wrong thing. Or you knew you were doing the wrong thing and finally stopped. <laughs> it was painful because of chastening. Nevertheless, after it yields the peaceable fruit of what? Righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So listen, you're going to be trained by it. 
It's called sufferings, chastenings. You're going to be trained by it. Everyone's trained by it. The Bible says Jesus learned through his suffering. Everyone gets chastened. Everyone gets rebuked. And, 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 it, and let me tell you, God isn't going to, you know, say something to you that just is irate. He chastens us in love. He corrects us in love. The enemy rebukes you in the area of fear, guilt, condemnation. The enemy always puts guilt on us. The Lord will not put guilt on you. Amen? Hallelujah. James chapter 4. James 4. In verse 6. Well, let's start at verse 1. James 4, verse 1, let's speak it together. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may what? Spend it on your pleasures. Whose will is that? The will of man. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Why? Because the world wants to produce the will of man, or actually the will of Satan, by utilizing the blindness of the will of man. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself a what? An enemy of God. And in and, and, and this enemy of God, it means that God's not your enemy. You're his. I want to say that again. God is not your enemy. You're his enemy. So everybody got it. Why are you his enemy? Because you are coming against his will. Amen. So you become his enemy. Verse 5. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Grace is the plan of God. Therefore, he says, God resists the what? Proud, but gives what? Grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will what? Flee from you. So again, judgments come because people are doing the will of man and coming against the will of God. That's why there's great judgment in this country. We see it happening all over areas. You know, there was something I was reading in the Scripture. In fact, let's go to Psalm, I think it's Psalm 19. Hallelujah. Psalm 19. So we know that God does not approve the will of Satan or the will of man. He's only approving his will. Amen? And, and, and approving his will, that means he's going to bring judgments for awakening. Everything's about awakening. Things happen in our life to awaken us. We get an accident sometimes to awaken us. Traumas happen sometimes to awaken us. And of course, some things are caused by the enemy to prevent us from doing the will of God. In Psalm 19 and verse 1, let's read it together. It says, The heavens declare the what? Glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, night unto night reveals knowledge. So is God speaking to us? Yes, all the time, day and night, isn't He? There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun. Now, 
He's also talking about the Son of God in the tabernacle of God. He's talking about Jesus getting ready to leave the tabernacle and come to get his bride. Watch this. Verse 5, look at this. Which is like a what? Bridegroom, which if there's a bride, there's a bridegroom. He's the bridegroom. Which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. His chamber is the most holy place. And rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of heaven and its circuit to the other. And there is nothing hidden from its what? Heat. Now, when I began to see this and I began to see the judgments that's going on, I began to realize that, you know, there is global warming. It's a part of God's judgment. The closer Jesus gets, the more hot it gets here. See, he's talking about him leaving his chamber, the bridegroom leaving the chamber. And now watch what follows this because he says his, its heat is felt everywhere, his presence. I'm thinking, man, look at the, look at what's going on in the weather. Look at all, the closer Jesus gets, the more shaking there's happening. The closer we get to the return of the Lord, you're going to see more and more things shake and happen because of wake-up time. Watch this now. Look at verse 7. What does he say? The law, the law of the Lord is what? Perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise is simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Now, these are all the oracles of God, aren't they? These are the things that he says. These are the things that he speaks. The fear of the Lord is what? Clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than fine gold. Yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter than, than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is what? Warned. And in keeping them there is what? Great reward. Great reward. So in other words, he's waking. He's saying, listen, it's time to awaken here. Hear what I say. Give your ear to me. What is all the, the seven letters in the book of Revelation to all the churches? It, it, the end result is he who hears what the Spirit is saying. He who hears what the Spirit is saying. Everything is about that. And John 10. Awakening judgments. What comes after judgment? Wrath. And then what? Death. John 10, verse 7. Let's speak it together. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Okay, so we used to listen to the voice of the stranger, didn't we? So when you listen to the devil, are you a sheep? No, you're a goat. Verse 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go out, in and out, and find pasture. The thief does not come except to what? Steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have it life and that they may have it what? More abundantly. So these are areas in personal. Are things being stolen? Are things being killed? Are things being destroyed in your life? Then there's open doors. Isn't there? Now, does God use the enemy for judgment? Amen. Amen. There are five awakening judgments I want to share with you. And these five awakening judgments that we talked about, you know, not only can they be associated with nation, but they can be associated with self, but I want to talk about nation. 
one of the first things that begins to happen is protection is removed. You know, when um, when the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? He's an upright man. He said, man, he isn't going to curse me no matter what you do to him. But God was using Job to kick butt on Satan. God sent Job in the ring. God used Job to humiliate Satan. And he did. Of course, I can see if the Lord said, have you considered my upright servants and so forth? Everybody would be going, no, Lord, don't talk. No, wait a minute, man. You know, don't, don't mention my name. But in this, the first thing that the Lord allowed to happen was he allowed Satan to kill all of Job's animals that he used for sacrifice because by protection of the blood. Because Satan could not get to him because he sacrificed every day. So one of the first things that you're going to find out in the areas of when uh, the awakening judgment comes is that protection begins to crumble. The enemy seems to have more access to him. Things seem to be crumbling in certain areas. Things are being stolen. Finances, this, that, whatever. So you're going to find protection begin to be removed. You're going to find the economic struggle. Is that happening in this country? Amen. You're going to find weather causing a lot of damage. You're going to find sickness will be more fluent. You know, we're battling sickness all the time, aren't we? Because it's allowed in from this country. Because when the leaders of the country are, are wicked, then it allows a lot of these afflictions to come in. We're going to see lack of jobs. There'll be lack in life. One of the things that will also happen is division. Division will be established because the enemy will be penetrating or infiltrating and the word says a house divided won't stand so we see these are areas where these are we see awakening judgments these are things that God is allowing to happen to awaken his people so eventually they will cry out and say God what's up and he's going to say you you're up Get up. It's time to wake up. On Luke 13. Luke 13. Is everybody okay? Luke 13. In verse 1. There were present at that season some who told him about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans? Because they suffered such things? I tell you, no. But unless you what? Repent, you will also likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the tower and Solomon fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all? All the other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you what? Repent, you will all likewise perish. So what is he saying? It's time to repent from these things. It's time to turn away from these things. Or else the end result is perish or death, isn't it? In First Peter chapter 4. Again, this is not about religion. It's about relationships. 
where there's truly a relationship with the Lord, repentance is a part of your life. It's not something you have to think about. Do I need to repent for this? <laughs> you do it automatically. Lord, you know what? I know I offended you. I'm sorry. You know, I, you know, I don't know if I sinned or not. No, that's not. First Peter chapter four. Verse fifteen. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for what? Judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? So, we know that judgment has begun in the house of God. It's been going on for a period of time. But judgment is not only in the house of God, it's spreading out globally in a great way. It's in this country right now. We are seeing tremendous amount of changes. We all see more and more changes. But I'm going to tell you something which is very powerful because I saw a wave coming. And I saw this wave coming. And it wasn't a destructive wave. It was a wave of blessing and prosperity. And when I saw the wave coming, the Lord said, it's going to overtake my body. It's going to overtake my kingdom. It's going to overtake my people. It's going to overtake them. See, the rest of the world will be under great deception. But the body of Christ will stand firm. Those who are right with God will stand firm. And I'm telling you, the blessings are going to overtake us in a mighty way. That's why God is stern right now. He's stern. Because those who are not right with God, that wave is going to Move them. So the wave will be either on your side or against you. Everybody got it? It's either going to overtake you with blessing or it's going to overtake you. And you're going to do a lot of rolling. And there'll be a lot of bruises. Drag through more bushes. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go to Ezekiel 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. So we're getting prepared for training for reigning. Ezekiel 3 and verse 16. Well, that was really good. Yes. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 16. Now it came to pass at the end of what? Seven days. What's the number seven mean? Complete and perfect. That the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore hear word from my mouth and give them warning from me. Everyone say, God has called me to be a watchman for this time for this season and preparation for His return in Jesus' name. Verse 18. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your what? Oh, at your hand. So whose responsibility is it to warn them? Ours. Because God is raising us to be watchmen. 
I stand up here and preach the word of God in warnings over and over and over. Over and over and over. You can come to every service and you're going to find some kind of warning. Because his love is associated also with his wrath. Amen. God's love is great. I love his presence. But he, there's also a judgment and a wrath of God that I don't want to be a part of. So God has called us to warn. So there's an area of training, isn't there? Verse 19. Yet if you warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Again, when a righteous man, now check this out, the wicked is lost, isn't he? What about the righteous? If you, and again, when a righteous man turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall what? Die. Because you did not give him warning, he shall die in his sins, and his righteousness shall not be what? The righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered. Let me tell you something. When a believer has served the Lord for many years and breaks covenant, all of his treasures are removed. But he gets to start over again. His righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered. But his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the righteous man that the righteous should not sin, he does not sin, he shall surely live because he took warning. Also, you have delivered your soul. Does everybody got it? So in this time, we are called to be watchmen. And in being called to be a watchman, first of all, we need to get cleaned up our house first don't we? This house needs to get cleaned up first. That's why I go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. In verse 21. Let's speak it together, please. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he'll be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call out on the Lord, out of what? With a pure heart. So what's he saying? Evil company corrupts good habits, doesn't it? So get away from those who are not right with God. Everybody okay? Verse 23. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all able to teach patient in humility, correcting those who are in opposition if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive to do by him to what? Do his will. To do whose will? The will of the devil, which means the will of man, isn't it? Amen? So there's that area where we've got to be cleansing you know, when you see woe in the Bible, you can sure understand it's associated with a warning and either God's judgment or God's wrath. Go to Isaiah 15. People say, yo, to get somebody's attention. God says, woe. Isaiah 15. It 
Is everybody there? Good. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Well, see, maybe it's Ezekiel. <laughs> that ain't there. Hallelujah. No. Sometimes I can't read my writing because I'm writing very fast. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whoa. <laughs> Maybe I should do a wow. <laughs> well, anyways. Hallelujah. It's somewhere in the Bible. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, wow. Well. Anyways. There's a lot of woes in the Bible, okay? Whoa, just don't do woe with me. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Let's go to Romans 13. Everybody there? Let's go to verse 12. 13, 12. The night is what? Fire spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. And why do we not want to make provision for the flesh? Because if the enemy allows, if he attacks us or deceives us or convinces us to walk in the flesh, we what? We reap corruption. So everybody got that? So this in this here, there's this area where we've got to become in that place of awakening and awaken from sleep. Go to Ephesians 5. Remember, the enemy's going to try to put us to sleep, isn't he? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Therefore, he says what? Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what? What the will of the Lord is. Not what the will of man is, but what the will of the Lord is. Amen. And go to um, Romans chapter 2. Romans 2. In verse 1. 
Let's speak it. Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge. For whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. But we know that judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O man, you who judge those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to what? Repentance. But in accordance with your hardness and your impeding heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath and a day of wrath, revelation of righteous judgment of God. So in this, what he's saying is, you know, you are leading from not only judgment, but you are leading to wrath. Because you are practicing the same thing. You're judging somebody else on something, but you're practicing the same thing. Even the Word tells us that those approve. Go to Romans 1. In verse 28. It says, Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting being filled with all unrighteous sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are what? Whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who what? Practice them. So if you approve of those, you'll be judged the same way they are. Amen? you got to begin to realize that the United States is murdering children tremendously. Hundreds of thousands of children are being murdered every year. Every abortion clinic is a murder zone. Not only people are murdering one another, influenced by the demonic forces, killing people over $5. I mean, it's just getting crazy. And, and why is it getting worse? One of the things is because man is actually drawing evil out of hell. They're actually drawing evil out of hell now. So the word tells us that the righteous and the wickedness will hit a climax. Eventually, there will be a huge collision. And we're leading to this collision. So right now, one of the things that the Lord is doing is He's sending out the awakening judgments. But thank God that you and I are not accounted for the day of wrath. Amen? Hallelujah. We are not accounted for that. Let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 6. Revelation 6. In verse 12. So don't be shaken by the things that you're seeing or hearing right now. Stand fast. It doesn't matter what's going on. You're not a part of the wrath. Revelation 6, verse 12. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up. And every mountain and island was moved out of its place. Can you imagine being here if that, when that happened? And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid himself in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne from the wrath 
of a lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Wow. Now I'll close at Ecclesiastes 8. Awakening judgments. <clears throat> Ecclesiastics eight. It's right after Proverbs. So God is speaking to his people and to this country and to the world right now. Do you know that the word says that the Lord will return when everyone has heard the gospel? Well, I can tell you that there is radio, television, satellites, that the word of God is being spread all over the globe. Internet. We get people from Singapore, all kinds that hit our website from all over the world. Go on our eternal library. And they see that. And the word of God is being declared there. And the word says when the word has been spread through the world that Jesus will return. We are very close to that. We have seen the judgments. The word is being spread. And God is raising it up and shaking his own body to get things cleaned up. But he's about to pour out his spirit in a mighty way and overtake us with the blessings of his presence and with the tools and, and the finances that are needed for these end days. So we need to hear what he's saying, amen? Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 4. It says, "Were the word of a king is, there is what? Power. And who may say to him, what are you doing? He who keeps his command will experience nothing harmful. And a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment. Because for every matter there is a time and judgment. Though the misery of a man increases greatly. For he does not know what will happen. So who can tell him when it will occur? No one has power over the Spirit to retain the Spirit, and no one has power in the day of death. There is no release from that war, and wickedness will not deliver those who are given to it. So we definitely need to hear what the Lord is having to say. Keep your eyes open, your ears open, and your heart open to what the Spirit is saying. Be ready in season and out. If you need wisdom, ask. If you need discernment, ask. Make sure you, that you start your day in prayer. Seek the kingdom of God and all things will be added to you. Start the morning with the will of God, not the will of man. And you'll have dominion over the will of man the rest of the day. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We commit all of our concerns and cares to you. We ask that the seed that has been part of a grow and bear fruit for your glory and that we may be signs and wonders and watchmen to those who have been taken captive to do the will of Satan in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Remember to spread the word that Saturday's dollar day. What else? Praise God. <laughs>